For here as one tonight, you take your stand. Two lives joined together and two hearts that are bound forever. And before the whole world, you're declaring what a treasure you have found in this woman and what a treasure you have found in this man. And in a few short moments, you're going to be speaking those sacred vows to one another. But these words that you're going to speak are the foundation stone by which you're going to build the rest of your life. Nine years have led to this moment. And now you enter into the unknown world of the future of marriage. And what a world it's going to be with you too. The love that you have and you share. And tonight you're going to promise that love because that's what vows are really all about. Declaring to her and declaring to him that this is your beloved chosen your beloved chosen bride, and your beloved chosen groom. And then with a choice, you make the promise tonight, the traditional vows to love, honor, and cherish. You make the promise because with all you've already gone through, there's so much maturity here already and solidness between the two of you. So I think you know that this is a lot more than feelings and emotions, as much as that is. This promise is, no matter what, I will love you today tomorrow and forever. That's what you're promising this woman, and that's what you're promising to him. In short, I ain't going anywhere. You're stuck with me, <laughs> stuck with each other, till death do you part. And I think the best description of what that promise to love looks like and the depth and riches of love was written by a man named Paul, and here's what he said. Love's very patient, and it's very kind. It's never jealous or envious. It's never boastful or proud. It's never haughty, selfish, or rude. Love doesn't demand its own way. Love is not irritable or touchy. Love doesn't hold grudges and will hardly notice when others do it wrong. Love's never glad about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. If you love someone, you'll be loyal to them no matter what it costs you. You'll always believe in them. You'll always expect the best of them, and you'll always stand your ground in defending them. And that love, Paul says, never fails. So the very love that's brought you together tonight is the very love you're promising together tonight. And it is that love that will keep you together all the days of your life. But more than that, Paul also says that this love has a height, depth, width, and breadth that surpasses all knowledge so that this love grows. It deepens and widens and gets higher as you pour out your love to this woman and as you pour out your love to this man, watch how this love is going to grow through the years between the two of you so that someday, dare I say, you will grow old together more in love than you can possibly imagine the way you feel about one another this day. And so with that in mind, it's time to make that promise of love and these sacred vows, this binding commitment you're making before your witnesses, you two are witnesses. You're here to remind them, I was there. <laughs> I saw it. I heard it. And this is a promise that you're going to do everything you can to make this marriage be all it can be despite whatever adversities you face for as long as you live. And they're very sacred, known as a covenant promise that you're making to one another. I love you. You're my best friend. <laughs> Today is the end of our journey as individuals, We're just the beginning together. I promise to encourage and inspire you, <laughs> to laugh with you, comfort you when we're struggling. You have one of the biggest hearts I know. It always make me smile. Life, when it gets tough, we'll be together. When our love isn't easy, we'll be together. We'll face everything together. I promise to cherish you and always hold you in the highest regard. I promise this and more for the rest of my life. I love you. I never thought nine years ago when you mistakenly showed up at Mad Max instead of Max and Irma's <laughs> and then gave me attitude for being at the wrong place that you would be the one standing before me now. We have very different personalities, you much more ex extroverted than I, but the more we continued to date and get to know each other, I began to see how we complemented one another and before long, I knew you were the one. As I stand before you, I vow to love you as you love me through all hardship, darkness, and pain, to reach for our joys, our hopes, and always with honesty and faith. Not just for this moment, not for just an hour or a day or a year. I will always love you and be faithful to you.
Today I lose my name, but as I take your hand in marriage, I gain my partner and best friend for life. Listening to your vows, I, li I like how it begins by saying that the hands are your best friend, strong and full of love for you, that are holding yours in your wedding day as you promise to love each other today, tomorrow, and forever. These are the hands that are going to work alongside yours as together you build your future. They're the hands that are going to passionately love you and treasure you through the years. And with the slightest touch, you're going to comfort you like no other. These are the hands that are going to hold you when fear or grief fills your mind. They're the hands that are going to countless times wipe tears from your eyes, tears of sorrow and tears of joy. They're the hands that are going to give you support and encouragement to fulfill all of your dreams. They're the hands that are going to give you strength when you need it. And lastly, they're the hands that even when wrinkled and aged, will still be reaching for yours, still giving the same unspoken tenderness with just a touch. Now, before we do the rings, I wanna give you a couple of words of encouragement. I, I like the way you said your opposites and, and <laughs> you know, that'll, that'll be interesting in your life. It'll be, as you probably already learned, I, 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 am, I, I am a complete introvert like you and my wife is about the, she's an extrovert on steroids. So we have a lot of fun. But I think that's good because you'll, you'll rub off on each other and your extroversion will help her introversion and your introversion will help his extroversion. And I just want to encourage you to just keep nine years you've worked at it, keep working at it. It's a good work, isn't it? It's a worthwhile work and it's been said that you'll reap what you sow. And you notice how you're holding each other's hands and you blended this together. And I think it's such a key thing to marriage is that word connection maintaining connection at all times and if you ever feel like you're losing connection be the first to speak it out don't let yourself be disconnected I've, I've been marrying couples and a pastor for a long time and I see a lot of couples that won't humble out and get disconnected and they drift so far apart it's really difficult to come back together don't let it happen to you you stay close like you are right now all the days of your life and keep dating one another and courting one another and adding embers of fuel is kindling to keep the fires of romance together. And I just encourage you to be such a man so I can tell how much she loves you and respects you, but she'll always say about you that her life was better because you've been in it. And for you to be such a woman that he'll always be able to say about you that his life was better because you've been in it. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure, huh? So few simple things are all that really takes to really have a rock solid beautiful life together and that's my prayer for you so much happiness and so much unity between the two of you such great communication so much peace in your home and joy and so much prosperity in all your endeavors in life blessings to you both these rings are very sacred and humble symbols the circle symbolizing the unity of your love the purity of the metal symbolizing the purity of your love but most of all, they symbolize your heart and the promises you're making tonight. And I hope there'll be times that you might look at those rings and remind yourself of that night in Miami Beach where you made these promises to one another. So wear these rings very thoughtfully and reverently, soberly, tenderly, lovingly, proudly, and hilariously all the days of your life. So why don't you, John, place in your bride's left finger, repeat after me, my beloved chosen Diana. My beloved chosen Diana. You are my love. You are my love. My life. My life. My best friend. My best friend. And with this ring. With this ring. I commit my life to you. I commit my life to you. May it be a reminder of my love. May it be a reminder of my love. And the sacred commitment. And the sacred commitment. That I've made here today. That I made here today. Beautiful Diana. Now place it on your groom's left finger as well. And repeat after me. My beloved chosen John. My beloved chosen John. You are my love. You are my love. My life. My life. My best friend. My best friend. And with this ring. And with this ring. I commit my life to you. I commit my life to you. May it be a reminder of my love. May it be a reminder of my love. And the sacred commitment. And the sacred commitment. That I've made here today. That I made here today. Now please take each other's hands and I have one last question for you. John, do you take Diana to be your loving wife forsaking all others as long as the two of you shall live? I do. Diana, do you take John to be your loving husband, forsaking all others as long as two of you shall live? I do. Well, it is so much as you've spoken sacred vows to one another and you've sealed them with the giving and receiving of rings to one another. There's nothing left for me to do but say 
It is my joy, my honor, my pleasure, and my deep privilege by the virtue of the power vested in me to now pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss your bride. And I'd like to introduce Mr. and Mrs. John Coma. Congratulations, you are married.